The TV sitcom character Ellen is set to announce she's a lesbian. But not everyone is applauding ABC's plans to air the episode. The Reverend Jerry Falwell wants sponsors to stay away from the coming out broadcast. Reverend Falwell talks morality in the media next in The Crossfire. For Ellen Morgan, 1997 is going to be the year of living dangerously. Tonight, Ellen is ready for her coming out. Our network viewers and advertisers. From Washington, Crossfire. On the left, Geraldine Ferraro. On the right, John Sununu. In the crossfire, in Lynchburg, Virginia, Reverend Jerry Falwell, Chancellor of Liberty University. And in San Francisco, Kate Kendall, Executive Director of the National Center for Lesbian Rights. Good evening. Welcome to Crossfire. Is America ready for a prime-time television sitcom featuring a lesbian lead character? That's what many are asking in anticipation of the upcoming ABC episode of Ellen, when the title character, played by Ellen DeGeneres, will announce her lesbianism. The Reverend Jerry Falwell of The Moral Majority has been urging major sponsors not to advertise on the broadcast next month. He says she will be the 23rd primetime homosexual character on network television this season. Falwell says, quote, I can't imagine that network programmers could possibly believe that our nation's parents are pleased with this unapologetic kowtowing to a small minority of homosexuals. The network stands by its plans and said it expects the broadcast to be fully sponsored. Many gay activists applaud the episode as a positive portrayal of the gay community and say Ellen will serve as a role model for young people. So tonight in the crossfire, is this a publicity stunt by the network or the moral majority? And how will network viewers respond to Ellen's coming out? Cherry? Reverend Falwell, aren't you living in a bit of an unreal world? Uh, in today's society, gay people are very much a part of us. Um, and television, if it reflects society, should also reflect the, the lives of homosexuals. Don't you agree? Well, Jerry, the fact is that uh, one to two percent of the population is gay and lesbian. That, that is reality. But there are many other persons out there whose lifestyles do not represent what the vast majority of parents families in America believe is right for their children. And since the airwaves, the public airwaves, belong to the people, I think we have the right as parents to sit down with our children, our grandchildren, and expect that, uh, and it's not just this issue, but the, the entire gamut, to expect that profanity, excessive violence, uh, the portrayal of uh, homosexuality as an alternative lifestyle is not paraded let's, before let's our children. Con let's continue that a minute then. Did I miss something? Did I hear you bo boycotting as you are here? Or have I heard you gone out to sponsors to urge them not to advertise on New York PD Blue, on uh, Melrose Place, Friends, 90210? I mean, we could go on and on with shows that show premarital, extramarital sex, drug usage. I mean, that's not stuff you want to teach to American kids either. No, I think that's very bad. And that's why I've objected in writing, the telephones, all kinds of, of, uh, of communications with all the networks and the, and the manufacturers and sponsors. I wrote uh, this, this past week to uh, the board chairman of General Motors and Chrysler and Johnson & Johnson and appealed to them not on the basis of a boycott, but rather as parents and uh, caring business leaders to stand up with corporate America and uh, people of faith in this country on behalf of the children. And thank God all three have withdrawn their support of that program. Well, let's get back to the question that I asked you, which is, have you done the same thing with reference to the other shows, like uh, NYPD yes. Blue and all the other shows? done it? Yes. You yes, have done I it have. with all those other shows? Oh, with, er with every one of them. <clears throat> we, it's incredible. We have not heard about those. Let me ask you something. You've put pressure on these shows, sponsors, um, but you acknowledge that there are 23 other gay characters on television in various series. Um, how come you haven't come out and done this before? Is it just because oh, of Ellen? I have objected and we've done it publicly. I've done it on television. I've done it on this program once. And, and in reality, this is the first time that uh, the, uh, there's been a, a real uh, firestorm from it and I'm glad there is one. But I'm particularly happy that uh, major corporate sponsors have withdrawn support of Ellen. I hope this is uh, the setting of a precedent so that writers and, and uh, network executives will become more responsible uh, to the children the families of America. Uh, Kate, let me ask this. Aren't, aren't uh, 
Jerry Falwell and his supporters just exercising their right in requesting that these advertisers not sponsor the show? Oh, absolutely. And I would never say that Reverend Falwell or his followers or anyone else who shares his views shouldn't have a right to request that advertisers not advertise on various shows. I am heartened to hear, although I have to say in, uh, in all the press around the Ellen situation, I don't see any other evidence of uh, Reverend Falwell calling for a boycott of the shows that really depict an undermining of the American family. I mean, there is no one who is more concerned about children uh, than me and many other lesbians and gay men in this country. I'm a parent of a 15-year-old and a 9-month-old. I worry about their future. I worry about violence. I worry about drug use. The real evil is not lesbians and gay men who are decent, hard-working, law-abiding citizens who contribute to the fabric of this country. The real evil is violence, but, is crime. Those are the things that I would like to see Reverend Falwell putting his talents Kate, but he behind. Has, but he has. Kate, and, I and, have and as he has that, pointed and out, that and he has done that a number of times. And Reverend I've supported, Falwell? I have supported uh, with, with aggressiveness uh, the efforts of the American Family Association and uh, with the Southern Baptist Convention two years ago and others who we, we've been at this for many many years but it and, is so uh, clear NYPD you just mentioned uh, blue we uh, we uh, did all we could to prevent NYPD blue uh, becoming such a risque program I think that we're just totally ignoring uh, the rights of families with public airwaves not to turn the switch but to have the right to believe that in the public airwaves this kind of obnoxious and objectionable material is not dumped into our living. Kate Kendall? All right, let's think, of, let's look at this. Let's look at this. We're talking about lesbians and gay men who are contributing members of society, who have children, who raise families, who do the very best they can to be good citizens and to contribute to the safety and security of this country. Reverend Falwell cannot really claim that he has not put tremendous energy and attention and emotional and financial capital behind scapegoating lesbians and gay men. And if all of that were directed instead to fighting the true evils that we all suffer under and the concerns that I have as a parent to making this world a better place for my children, I can't imagine the strides we would make to truly strengthen the is, American family. Jerry? Kate, this is Good Friday. Two days from today is Easter Sunday. Absolutely. I've been a pastor for 41 years of the same congregation with 22,000 members. I've led many gays and lesbians to Christ. I've seen the forgiveness that comes through the death, burial, resurrection of the Savior. I've seen gays and lesbians not only forgiven, but totally transformed and become heterosexual and productive members of society uh, in a way that, is, uh, uh, that uh, matches what the biblical teaching about the family is, namely one man for one woman well, for one lifetime. Lesbians and gay men as lesbians and gay men are also contributing productive members of society without needing to or being forced to become heterosexual. Let's talk about what we're really dealing with here. We're talking about a character, a fictional character as a lead character on a prime time news program depicting what is reality, the existence of lesbians and gay men in every strata of society, on every street corner, in every town, in every neighborhood. We should not be scapegoated because we choose to love who we love, and we should not be vilified. And the energy and the rhetoric that goes behind vilifying lesbians and gay men has to be responsible Kate, Kate, for hate crimes, for violence against lesbians Kate, and gay men. Uh, That's how we're living. We're living with we're that kind of oppression. About, we're not talking about your civil rights. We're simply saying that we do not want the gay and lesbian lifestyle paraded in the living rooms of America's homes as an acceptable alternative lifestyle any more than we want uh, the risque heterosexual promiscuity that's on N NYPD Blue and Melrose Place and all the rest. We would like to be able to sit down with our families without hearing profanity, without seeing all the things you mentioned a few moments ago. But we also believe, as do a vast, overwhelming majority of American people, that the homosexual lifestyle is not an alternative one. And while civil rights certainly should be granted to all, and what uh, Ellen does in her private life is totally her business. Let, what she does in our living rooms is let, our let business. Let me ask Kate. Falwell if he's ever seen the show, Ellen. 
Have you yes, ever seen I'm, it? Yes, I have seen it, and we have a lot of people now who are writing down the names of the sponsors who, since General Motors, Chrysler, and uh, Johnson & Johnson well, John, have gone south, you've mentioned we're that writing three down times. the names. Johnson & Johnson has said that they were not going to advertise on the show anyway. They have a schedule of ads, and so they weren't supposed to be well, advertising anyhow. that's what they said, but since January 1, they've been on nine times, and the other two but have been on 12 times they take a schedule of advertising. Each. But and may I say to you that, the, that we are also writing down the names of all the other sponsors so that we can appeal to their civic responsibility to withdraw also if Michael Eisner, who, who's a crusader in this area, uh, persists in, uh, in doing this to the children of the, our country. Kate Kendall, you made, you made a compelling argument for, for the fact that you feel that, uh, that these are, uh, gays and lesbians are contributing members of society. Don't you feel exploited? that since your, your organization acknowledges that there's almost two dozen characters already on television, don't you think that Ellen is exploiting this issue because they're so low in the ratings that they need something to save the show? They have been playing this tune on this episode since September or October, trying to lead up to this, trying to save the show. That's pure, unadulterated exploitation of a group you're trying to speak for. Well, you know, and I've heard that argument before, but I think it's somewhat specious because if Reverend Falwell has his way, this will be the death knell of Ellen. And I think they're taking a huge risk. Thank, I'm thankful, though, that both ABC, their parent company Disney, and Ellen DeGeneres have the moral and political will to depict what is already a reality in this country, and that is we live and work beside every other American, and we contribute just as much. We should be depicted in prime time in the same way any other family structure, any other individual is depicted, because there is nothing wrong with lesbians and gay men and the way that we live our lives. We're contributing and we should be honored for that. Okay, we're going to go to break now. What we're going to do is when we come back, we're going to talk a little bit about whether or not boycotting promotes bigotry.